Hello guys and welcome to Thought Well by An Academy and welcome to yet another rapid revision session with us. In today's rapid revision session, we are going to be talking about the sense organs. So let's get started. I am pretty sure y'all have heard about this term, the sense organ, from the time y'all have been in your lower grades in school. And now at 10th grade, you are going to be delving into the deeper concepts of the sense organs. But speaking about this chapter, you are going to be dealing mainly with the ear and the eyes. All right. So what is a sense organ? I'm pretty sure your examiner is not going to be polite enough to ask y'all for the definition of a sense organ. No, not that easy, especially when it comes to ICSE. But nevertheless, we will still define it for our understanding. A sense organ can be defined as a part of our body like the eyes like the eyes nose etc that is responsible for sight, smell, so on and so forth. All right, pretty simple. I'm pretty sure you all know what it is, but just thought I'll define it. So like you all know, the five major sense organs does feel funny to be teaching you all the five major sense organs, but the five major sense organs would be your eyes, your ears, your tongue, nose, and skin. All right. They enable us to be aware of the conditions of our external and internal environment. So this is what our sense organs help us with. They enable us to be aware of the conditions of our external and internal environment. All right, moving forward, receptors. Okay, so this is something that y'all should give attention to. Uh, again, speaking of the definition of receptors, uh, a receptor can be defined as um, a specialized tissue or cell that is sensitive. to a particular stimuli where are I stimuli okay here to a particular stimulus so that would be your definition of a receptor and guys see speaking of the receptors in relation to our five main sense organs they can be categorized into these. So here you can see what are the receptors, what and where are they located, what are they sensitive to and what are they responsible for. So speaking of the first receptor that we are going to be talking about, it would be the photoreceptor. Can see whenever you all hear the word photo, all is associated with sight, vision or your eyes. Okay, In that way it would be easier for you all to remember. So photoreceptors in the case of our sense organs would be the rods and cones of the eye's retina. Uh, we will see what rods and cones are later in our classes, but for now, they are just specialized cells that are present within your eye's retina. All right. So that is where uh, the photoreceptors would be present, and they are sensitive to light, and obviously they'd be responsible for vision. So that is your photoreceptors for y'all. Speaking of phonoreceptors, all right. Phono is associated with your ear and hearing. All right. So phonoreceptors are present in your inner ear. They are sensitive to sound and they are responsible for hearing and balance. All right. Coming to chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors are sensitive to chemical substances. Okay. They are present in your tongue and nose 
and like I said, they are sensitive to chemical substances and responsible for your taste and smell. Alright, so remember, photoreceptors are responsible for your vision and are sensitive to light and your phonoreceptors are present in your inner ear. They are sensitive to sun and responsible for your hearing and balance. Chemoreceptors are sensitive to chemical substances and are responsible for taste and smell. All right. Thermoreceptors are temperature sensing receptors present in the skin. All right. They are sensitive to relative temperature changes and they are responsible for making your body feel hot or cold. I mean, when I say responsible, it does sense the heat or the cold with relative change in temperature. All right. Coming to uh, mechanoreceptors, I shall write it for you all over here. So these are just hidden down there. All right. These are receptors present in your skin and they are sensitive to mechanical stimuli like touch, pressure, etc. And they are responsible for sensing touch, pressure, vibrations, etc. All right. So these are your main receptors when it comes to your five sense organs. All right. So moving on, we come to the eyes. All right. They say the eyes are the window of your soul. Philosophical. Sorry. So the first part of the eyes that we would be talking about are the orbits. These are not the orbits in the universe, even though y'all might find the universe in some people's eyes. Do y'all? Okay. So orbits, the two eyes are located in deep sockets or orbits on the front side of the head. That is here, guys. Y'all would know that. So um, this is the, this is half a picture of a human skull. And these guys would be your sockets. Okay. And then you have the eye that is placed inside the sockets or the orbits like you would call them. All right. So the orbits, the two eyes are located in deep sockets, which are these or orbits on the front side of the face or the head in that way. All right. So next, each eye is in the form of a ball and can be rotated with the help of six muscles. This I think y'all would know. And next we're coming to the eyelids. The upper movable and lower eyelids protect the outer front surface of the eye and can shut out light. All right. So the eyelids here on top and your lower immovable eyelids, the eyelids on top do close and open while your lower ones cannot and they do help in protection and they can shut out light. All right. So those are your eyelids for y'all. Each eyelid carries outward curved eyelashes which prevent falling of large particles into the eye. All right. So they basically act like a very thin but pretty in case of girls barrier. All right. So those are your eyelids and your eyelashes for y'all. All right. So moving forward, the eyes, the eyebrows. Guys, isn't this too simple? But yeah, okay, let's just go through it. The eyes, eyebrows. Okay, although virtually not a part of the eyes, these are also protective. They prevent the raindrops. Wow. From they prevent the trickling raindrops from getting into the eye or also the trickling drops of you perspiring, as it said in your textbook. That is, I just thought I'll tell you all this in case you all didn't know perspiring guys is nothing but sweating all right just thought i would tell you all this on a side note all right so moving forward tear glands which are also called your lacrimal glands all right they are located at the upper sideward portion of the orbit that is your ball socket like your eyeball socket all right so that would be here that would be your lacrimal or your tear gland i would label that for y'all in a bit and they have six to twelve ducts of the gland pour out the secretion over the front surface all right and movements of the eyelids like blinking spread the liquid serving as lubricant for your eyes tears wash away dust particles keeping the eyes front surface clean 
Tears contain, guys, this is a really fascinating thing. Tears contain an antiseptic property due to an enzyme called lysozyme. I'll write it for you all over here again because it's covered. Lysozyme. All right. So it is due to the presence of this enzyme that your tears have an antiseptic property. All right which does of course kill germs. So coming to the labeling of your tear gland or your lacrimal glands. All right, so we start with the lacrimal gland first. So like we did see previously, the lacrimal gland is present on the upper sideward portion of your orbit or the eye socket. So this would be your lacrimal gland. All right, this portion here would be your lacrimal sac. While the lower portion of the lacrimal sac would be called your naso lacrimal duct guys naso here refers to your nose so it's called the naso lacrimal duct because it is through this that your tears do drain and go to your nose all right so we will study about this in detail later but for now naso lacrimal duct is over here and drains your tears to the nose all right and that is why when you have any i mean when you do put eye drops in your eyes you do sometimes get it in your nasal passage and it does also sometimes go down to your throat so that would be through the nasal lacrimal duct all right so this would be your lacrimal ducts they are present over here at the side of the eye the corner so these would be your lacrimal ducts and below the lacrimal gland you do have this part called the duct of the lacrimal gland. Guys, do remember the labeling of this diagram. You can get it in your exam as a file marker as they would give you the image and ask you to label it. So do remember this, all right? So moving forward, we go to the tear ducts, all right? Guys, remember, tear ducts are different from your tear glands and lacrimal glands, all right? So tear ducts, they drain the liquid into a sac lying at the inner angle of the eye, all right? And the nasolacrimal duct, like you all saw previously over here, the nasolacrimal duct, that you all saw here this is the nasolacrimal duct here all right so the nasolacrimal duct conducts the secretion into the nasal cavity like i told you all all right the tear glands pour out a lot of liquid which waters the eyes or overflows as tears due to irritation or certain emotional states now those emotional states can either be of sadness or happiness all right so moving forward the eyes functions of tears. Wow, tears also have functions. <laughs> tears do have functions. Lubricates the surface of the eye and it washes away dust particles from your eye. It helps in killing germs because of that antiseptic enzyme that is present, the lysozyme. All right, and it communicates emotions. All right, so these are the four functions of tears. So moving forward, conjunctiva. The conjunctiva is a very thin membrane covering the entire front part of the eye and later it does go on to become this thin transparent epithelium layer over the cornea all right so over the cornea it is reduced to a single layer of transparent epithelium all right and speaking of conjunctivitis all right i'm pretty sure you all would have heard of this disease called conjunctivitis it is the infection of the conjunctiva all right so it is a common eye disease and the outermost layer turns red due to a viral infection. So that would be conjunctivitis for y'all. So moving forward, 
we do have a small progress check and with this we would be coming to the end of part one of our rapid revision on the sense organs all right so let's try and answer this dash is a thin membrane covering the entire front part of the eye and is continuous with the inner lining of the eyelids we just saw this that would be your conjunctiva all right next dash is a special enzyme found in the tears of the eyes it has an antiseptic property which kills germs and l y s o z y m e so lysozyme is a special enzyme found in tears of the eyes it has an antiseptic property which kills germs dash are sensitive to chemical substances and are responsible for taste and smell these would be your chemoreceptors guys nice. chemo would relate to chemical substances so remember it that way so that would be your chemoreceptors and with that we come to the end of part one of our rapid revision on the sense organs i hope you all did have fun and stay tuned for our upcoming videos thank you guys revise take care have responsible fun like i always say and let's crack it